Well, you're watching Book TV on C-SPAN 2, and as 2012 draws to a close, one of the things we like to do is look back at the year in nonfiction books and look ahead to 2013. Joining us to help us are two guests in our New York studio. Sarah Weinman is the news director for Publishers Marketplace, and Bob Mintzheimer is the book reviewer and reporter for USA Today. Sarah Weinman, let's start with you, if you would. Give us your general assessment of 2012 for the book industry, especially when it comes to nonfiction books. And what are one or two notable books that you want to talk about? Well, first, it's helpful, Peter, to start off by saying that 2012 was a very eventful year in the book publishing world uh, between uh, publishers consolidating, uh, the Department of Justice suing uh, five publishers in Apple on ebook pricing and many developments which we'll cover later on in the program. Um, Amazon expanding its publishing operations, um, the Google settlement also moving forward in different directions. Those alone accounted for a substantial portion of book publishing news. On the nonfiction front, I would have to say that it was a very strong year. Um, in particular, we're seeing a lot of best of 2012 lists dominated by the likes of Catherine Boo's Behind the Beautiful Forevers, which was a winner of the National Book Award. We had Robert Caro's latest volume in his ongoing biography of Lyndon Johnson, and Andrew Solomon's Far From the Tree, which was only recently published. It was an over 900-page compendium uh, looking at different uh, child-rearing examples of special needs children. So those three books alone are very meaty, substantial books, but they're just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what was on offer for nonfiction. Bob Minsheimer, same question. All right. Well, um, picking a little bit up on what Sarah said, it was it was a big year for for dead presidents. Um, we have she mentioned Robert Caro's the fourth of will probably be five volumes on Lyndon Johnson, which is just an incredible uh, act of both reporting and writing um, about a. a seminal figure in 20th century American history. Um, but we also, uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin's book, The Team of Rivals, which was actually published in 2005, is back on the bestseller list thanks to Steven Spielberg's movie, Lincoln. Um, and on our list, it was up to number 20 or so, which is pretty remarkable for a serious uh, book that's been out so long. Um, and also, John Meacham's new biography of Thomas Jefferson, just when you think there's not more to be said about Thomas Jefferson. Someone comes along and writes a popular, readable, somewhat controversial book. So, um, so, so presidents have been in the news as well. Well, uh, it's hard to mention dead presidents and not talk about uh, Bill O'Reilly and his two books, Killing right. Lincoln, oh, sure. Killing Kennedy, <laughs> He's both bestsellers right. this past year. Uh, Bill O'Reilly and his writing partner, M Martin Duga. The, the, I actually interviewed Bill O'Reilly about his process. O'Reilly says his partner does the research, he does the writing. The idea is to write history like a thriller, uh, not in an academic sense. There are very few mm -hmm. footnotes there. You basically have to trust him on where he got his information from. It's kind of like history as a page turner. He's promising to announce his next book, which in O'Reilly fashion, uh, he says is going to, you know, blow the, uh, the whole walls down and be the biggest book in nonfiction history. We'll see about that. But yes, uh, his, his point, O'Reilly's point, is that history is often treated as too dryly. Uh, too dryly, dryly being a word maybe, I don't know, too, and, but it need not be. And so there's a lot of personality as well, probably more personality than policies in his books. Now, Sarah Weinman, a lot of books come out on current presidents, and this year was no exception for President Obama. Uh, Rachel Swarns wrote one about Mrs. Obama called American Tapestry. Jody Cantor, of course, wrote The Obama. She's a reporter with The New York Times. And then David Marinus's uh, first half of his biography on President Obama, Barack Obama, the story came out as well. Yes, I mean, obviously, whenever there's a sitting president, it's a boon for publishers who can jump on a bandwagon and publish as many books as possible. Um, the Marinus was interesting to me in particular because it delved into the early life of Barack Obama. Uh, from his childhood to when he was a student in New York to his early organizing days. And he really did a thorough job in terms of talking with a whole plethora of different people who knew 
the president in his early life. Jody Cantor also clearly uh, did quite a bit of uh, reporting and investigation with her book about the marriage between Barack and, Mich and Michelle Obama. And Rachel Swarns, from what I understand, uh, l took a, a larger view um, looking at uh, the First Lady and her w uh, larger ancestry and putting together uh, a larger story as a result. Now, Bob, of, of those, go ahead, okay. please. No, I was going to just jump in the, uh, of, of those three, my favorite was the Marinus. Um, it, although I, in my review, I think I wrote something about it, it was both exhaustive and a little bit exhausting. It's, he goes into every detail, and it, it ends as Obama is going off to Harvard, or has just entered Harvard, the law school. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's very much a kind of coming-of-age biography, the early part of, 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 of the president's life, and it was uh, very well researched. Um, the Jody Cantor book about a political marriage, I thought that was a bit forced. I always feel that unless you're part of a marriage, it's awful hard to understand, <laughs> and especially when um, she, uh, Cantor tried to make the case that, that Michelle Obama was far more political than she was going to let on, and there was political tension. There was a lot of sort of inf uh, counts of infighting in the Obama White House, which has been reported widely in the early days. Um, Rachel Swarm's history I thought was valuable because we forget that although all the attention is on President Obama being the first black president, because his black ancestors came from elsewhere, there were no slaves in his family. Mich Michelle Obama had both slaves and white ancestors. It's that great, you know, American complexity and how we, we, we reduce race to black and white, but um, it really isn't. And in fact, just to, uh, just to very quickly mention uh, David Marinus' uh, Barack Obama The Story, Book TV traveled to Kenya with Mr. Marinus. We uh, did a lot of taping over there, so you can see all of that and the special that we did with uh, David Marinus at our website, uh, booktv.org. Simply use the search function up in the upper left-hand corner, type in his name, and you can watch some of that footage. And uh, um, it was uh, uh, quite a trip to Kenya to see some and of that, that background. Yes, sir. And one of the great parts of his reporting was he sort of deconstructed Obama's early bio, uh, memoir, Faith of, Our Fa Faith of Our Fathers, is that his? Uh, dreams from dreams Our Fathers. Dreams of Our Fathers, excuse me. I, I think I got John McCain's title there. <laughs> dreams now, of Our Fathers, there's an interesting right? confluence of two right. different well, people there. Fathers, I had the fathers part right. Um, which he wrote in 95 or so, 95, yes. 96. And Maris went back and sort of re-reported some of the events, and we learned what was accurate in the book, what was not so accurate, what was composites. Um, so it's, it's a great uh, companion to read if you've read um, Obama's memoir. And now there are some publishers, uh, Regnery, Encounter, Sentinel, uh, WND, th that put out a lot of anti-President Obama books, including Edward Klein's The Amateur, David Limbaugh, The Great Destroyer, Charles Kessler's I Am the Change, and Dinesh D'Souza, Obama's America. Uh, quite critical of President Obama. Sarah Weinman, do these books sell well? They do sell well largely because they serve uh, rightly or wrongly as a counterpoint. Uh, many readers wish to buy into that counterpoint and as a result these books have a very active audience. And now that President Obama has been uh, re-elected, I'm sure that uh, these publishers with conservative imprints or who are conservatively inclined will continue to produce books that sell well because they will continue to appeal to an audience that demands these books. Now, uh, Bob Mintzheimer, have, have you interviewed any of these uh, critical authors? Uh, no. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Glenn Beck, but he has not um, recently taken on exactly um, President Obama. Um, it's sort of interesting. Who I think this is generally true. Who's ever in power in the White House the opposite uh, political slant on books does better. So if when a Democrat, liberal Democrat is in the White House, conservative books tend to do better. When there's a conservative in the White House, as on, under President Bush, books critical of the president tend to do better. In fact, I remember um, Bush at one point when during the, uh, he was being questioned about jobs or something, and he says, well, look what I'm doing for the book industry, because there were so many books out critical of him. I think that was the sort of the middle of his second term. 
And yet the irony with former President Bush is that when his own book, Decisions Points, came out several years ago, I believe if it wasn't